That's interesting. Two different webs. Look at these guys. What's that? Frogs! This isn't just a frog. It's called a gladiator frog. Gladiator. I believe these are the really, really, really big ones. For a gladiator tree frog, it's spawning time. And so he builds. The gladiator tree frog comes from South America. It spends most of the year up in the trees, but moves down to the ground during spawning time. At the edge of a pond or slow moving stream, the male frog builds a round enclosure out of clay, smoothing the walls with his spatula like fingers. What are spatula? <laughs> yeah, you use them to flip pancakes, right? They or, have, so they're flat like this. Or Krabby Patties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the spatula like fingers. In other words, his fingers are flat. So he smooths it all down. A few days later, when he's finished, he, sl he sits inside and calls out for a mate. He will drive away all males, but any female he attracts will inspect his enclosure before joining him to spawn. Their tadpoles will be well protected from predators in their walled nursery. While they grow, water will be seeping in, raising the level inside until the time when they're ready to swim over the walls and out into the wider world. So they make like a little pool where they can start their family. Woohoo, pool, pool. What's all that, mud? Or it said clay, clay or mud to keep the water in. Check this guy out. This is a three-spined stickleback. Three-spined stickleback? Yeah. A three-spined stickleback always protects his eggs, and so he builds. Why do you think it's called a, a three-spined stickleback? Look at the illustration. Because there's three spines, yeah. and it has like this stuff on it that makes it look like he's... Gonna well, tickle someone. Uh, it's called a stickleback. I think that that's not part of the fish. I think that that fish actually has seaweed or plant in its mouth. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. The three spine stickleback is found in ponds, slow flowing streams, and sometimes even pools along the seashore. During the mating season, the male chooses a shallow, weedy place. He makes a small dip in the bed of the stream with his snout and fills it with vegetation, mixing it with gluey, a gluey secretion from his kidneys so that it sticks together in a loose ball. Then he pushes through, he pushes through it to form a tunnel. Hmm. When a female approaches, he performs a kind of courtship dance to which she eventually responds by swimming into his nest so that her head and tail stick out at either end. In this position, she lays some of her eggs. A successful male attracts several females to lay eggs in his nest. Once he has fertilized the eggs, he guards them for about 10 days until they hatch. 10 and, days? Yeah, what 10. about sleeping? Uh, well, he might rest there, um, but... Oh, right, I almost forgot. Fish can't close their eyes. Yeah, I'm not sure how they, they rest or how they sleep. They but just it... lay, they just sleep, they just lower their bodies, and they just, um, back and just rest. Mm-hmm, they kind of take it easy, right? And continues to care for the tiny fish for some time afterward. So... The male fish is like a real daddy to his offspring. Some fish just leave the eggs and whatever baby fish hatch, whatever makes it, makes it. So there's all different kinds of fish, right? A caddis fly larva is soft and vulnerable. Hey, it's um, covered in shells. Right, and so it builds. 
The adult caddisfly lives around streams and rivers throughout the world. The female lays her eggs in water. As soon as a larva hatches from its egg, it begins to secrete a sticky silk thread from a gland near its mouth and winds it, and winds it around its body. Then it presses itself onto nearby objects such as small shells, stones, and grains of sand, which stick to the silk to form a hard, protective, well-camouflaged case, which is much smaller than a person's little finger. The case is open at Dude, both that's ends. That's the smallest finger I have. Mm -hmm. That's what I we're talking about. I guess those bugs are really, 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 really small. Oh, well, it's, the lar it's, it's talking about the larva, which would be the caterpillar. So, and it says that, that what they do is they secrete a sticky silk uh, from its mouth. And then it kind of wraps that silk, this sticky silk around its body. And then what it does is it, it rolls around. Didn't, didn't the passage say that it's um, smaller than your little... To it than a little person's little finger. That's right. Smaller than a person's little finger. But that is um the act that's how small the case is. So the larva, the caterpillar type um baby fly is inside of that. If you think about a fly, a fly is pretty small. Like flying insects are pretty small. So that's actually kind of good size, in my opinion. Like, pretty big. The case is open at both ends, allowing water to flow through so that the larva can breathe. The larva lives inside the case for about a year, adding to it as it grows. When it is ready to emerge, it bites its way out with its strong jaws, floats to the water surface, and takes to the air as a caddis fly. Hey, that's a fly. Mm -hmm. It's showing what hap what it looks like how when it comes out. And this is the last page. Is it? Oh yeah, you're right. Beavers seek a safe home for their family, and so they build. Beavers live in North America, Europe, and Northern Asia, and are famous for their building skills. They use famous. We're famous for our building skills. <laughs> well, there can be more than one thing that's famous. I'm, I think the book is suggesting that beavers are famous for their building. They use sticks, stones, and roots to build a dam across a slow-moving stream or river, filling in with gaps, filling in the gaps with finer vegetation, reeds, and mud or clay to make it watertight. The structure may also be anchored downstream with, with tree trunks and boulders. The dam creates an artificial lake within which the beavers can build their lodge, a cone-shaped woodpile hollowed out to form a living chamber with one or more underwater tunnels leading into it. The walls are lined with mud and the roof left more loosely built to let in air. The whole beaver family will live in the lodge, safely protected from predators. So that's the end of our book, And So They Build. What are some of the different reasons that animals might build? To capture something. Okay. To, to lay their babies. Mm -hmm. To live in. Mm -hmm. And I can't think of anything else. Sure. They and babies come in a few different forms. Some of the animals built nests for their babies, for their eggs. Some of them built nests in in order to um, have their babies. Like the mouse will have her babies inside that ball of woven reeds. Um, I found the mallee fowl really interesting. They make that oven to lay their eggs. Yeah. And then some of them will build things in order to attract a mate, like the the um, the oh. giant toad, bird, bower bird, 
And also that spider. I'm not going to see it again. I already saw it two times. Not the spider. The spider made it for a home and to capture um, food. But the three spine stickleback um, made his nest in order to attract females uh, to lay their eggs. Did you like the book? Yeah.